In all of Blade and Sorcery, this is the ultimate weapon. What's up guys, Pop 101 here. Today I'm going to be showcasing this sort of na. So without further ado, let's get started. Now for anybody that doesn't want spoilers, I'd highly recommend you pause this video and then you watch it once you've already beaten Blade and Sorcery. But for those of you that still want to watch this video, let me take you over to the tower. Here we are. It is absolutely stunning. These particles are absolutely beautiful. There's rain. It is such a fantastic environment. To me, it's honestly the best looking out of every place in Blade and Sorcery. And of course, we have our fantastic war portal right here. Not to mention all of these awesome crystals on the side, but that's besides the point. Summon Sword of Nah. What I'm gonna do, aside from playing with these gongs right here, is take you to where we can actually find this. So if I use gravity to help me out real quick, just to speed things up, we go through here, watch this. Not only is this place absolutely stunning, but let's take a look. Wow. Absolutely love gravity. If I didn't have it right now, this would definitely be a struggle. Alright, so what we need to do is head over here and then I can show you guys this. In order to beat Blatant Sorcery, we head over to this place and we need to actually turn on those. In order to do that, we grab this Sword of Na right here. And just a little side note, it does have the proper collider so you can stick your finger in the middle. My favorite part. But let's head over to the arena where I can actually showcase this baby off. Alright, now that we're in the arena, why don't we actually summon Sword of Na? And then I can show you how awesome this truly is. Hey, I'm trying to record a video here, pal. You couldn't wait? Oh! <laughs> yeah, so aside from this thing being very, very, very sharp... Regardless of whether you have dismemberment on or not, and aside from the blood looking absolutely outstanding from being on it, the main part of this video is showcasing the imbues. So, first off, really? Not that you need your body anyways. If you hold the spell button, you can activate it. And that's cool, don't get me wrong. But the best part about it, in my opinion, is if we close it up, when you imbue it with any of the elements, okay, stop time. When you imbue it with any of the elements, it opens up. And this is what it looks like. Start time. And from here, if you hold the spell button, you can actually use the staff abilities from just this single sword. And yes, that does include literally lighting enemies on fire. It is so cool and so overpowered. Not to mention, in this state, if we block his rocks, it is so incredibly sharp in both piercing and slashing. Not to mention, when you swing it around and you have... What the... <laughs> what is this? Okay, hold on. I'm sorry, I just needed to take a screenshot of that. That's hilarious. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> oh my gosh, I, I need to compose myself. So, we have the Staff Flamethrower ability, like so, which can light enemies on fire. And when you swing it, obviously it shoots out these little cinders, which can also light enemies on fire. That's cool. We also have Lightning. So when we imbue this bad boy with lightning, it takes on a brand new form. And of course, you guys guessed it, not only is it incredibly awesome just like before, but if we were to do something like... Whoa. Okay, lady, come here. Try to hit me. That was pretty cool. Watch this. So if they hit me with a weapon that can get imbued with lightning, we can actually create an arc. And if they hit the arc, they can get dismembered. So hold on, let me just... So wait a second, if I was to grab this right here and just... Oh, 
Oh yeah. Holy cow. I can just lay traps for enemies like that. Okay, but as you can tell, it has the lightning imbue. It can obviously, if you hold the spell button, shoot out the staff lightning imbue, which literally rips enemies' limbs completely off their body. That is so overpowered and extremely awesome. Not to mention when you use this to try to hit an enemy, it literally pierces through the entire blade. It is so cool. You better... Really? You too? Okay, one chop. Ready? And... Ooh. And overall, it's just extremely overpowered and so, so much fun to use. Although, I still need to say that my favorite part of it is gravity. I absolutely love the gravity imbue. Not only do they all look absolutely beautiful when they have their different imbues, and not only does it have the little imbue particle in the center, but with gravity, you can of course lift up enemies. They can't do anything to you. Or, let's say it doesn't float your boat. Let's say you don't actually like lifting up enemies. Well, oh my gosh. Well, I guess time froze for him. Ho oh, ho ho ho! That's awesome. What you can do is grab this and use it on items. So let's say you have a lady pissing you off. You can just get a barrel or you can get a crate and, well, do something like that. It is so much fun to use, regardless of what you do with it and nobody can stand up against you. It is the most overpowered weapon in the base game of Blade and Sorcery, and it's the only sword that allows you to use the Crystal Staff abilities. Come on. Oh, yeah. I'd say that did it perfect. <laughs> All right, but I have shown off the base imbues. What I'm going to do is actually complete a dungeon run and eventually fight Hector the Golem with this bad boy right here. So stay tuned because we are going to do that right now. Let's start off by imbuing this with fire. Try me. Easy. Stay down. Imbue with lightning. He's dead. <laughs> it's not even fair at this point. Alright, but I think that's it. So if you guys like this video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It helps out the channel a ton. Thanks for watching.